Hello. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw a stag. So go ahead, grab your pencils and paper, and let's do this. So for today's drawing, we're going to be using a lot of kidney bean and teardrop shapes, unlike the cubes and diamonds and circles that we've used before. So we'll be doing a lot of this sort of thing where you've got the, oh, it's a very straight line. Got the sort of kidney bean, but narrower at one end than the other or a teardrop shape. If you want to practice doing a couple of these. These are very useful for a lot of naturalistic drawing. If you're drawing simple arms and legs and uh, animals, humans, this is great for that sort of thing. There's a, there's a nice little lima bean there. Yes, I like lima beans. So if you think you are able to draw a teardrop and a tapered kidney bean, you should do just fine today. Go ahead and erase those. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is draw the body of the stag, and this is going to be a kidney bean shape that is thicker on one side than the other. and curves downward. This is a great shape too when you're drawing uh, the body of a horse, lion, you're going to have the wider end of the, the kidney bean, or it looks a little like a, a chili there. We'll have the wider end near the head and the narrower end near the tail. So then we're going to go up and we're going to do another tapered kidney bean going up this way. For the head, this could even be narrower for that neck there, like a very slender stag. The main thing with this one, the shapes are easy, but the proportions getting them to work alongside each other can be a little bit challenging. And we'll come off this way. Now this is going to be more of a straightened, it's still got that sort of a kidney bean taper coming up here, but we're going to give it a little bit of a flat top. If you were going to continue it, it would come back to that. And we'll give him a nose right there. Coming down in the back, we're going to do this back leg here with a teardrop shape. And you'll want to look at about where you're going to want to end the leg. This can be one of the most challenging things to kind of get in proportion. Now we're going with a fairly straight. It gets a little bit thinner there in the middle. And widens out again. And you'll want to have that rounded hoof coming downward. And make sure you show that it is a cloven hoof. For the front leg here, we're going to take a fairly 
straight line. You know, I don't like that angle. I prefer that he looks like he just was startled and he was actually had a little more forward lean on him. So we're going to have that leg go more this direction. This is more of a guideline here. And we're going to take a note of where the knee is. You can draw a circle there. And then to just kind of taper this up and then a real thin leg down below it. And again, you'll want to have the, the hoof. Here he's standing on a hill, so if the leg there is a little bit longer than the front leg, that's all right. You can always adapt the hill to match if the legs don't match up. In the back, you're going to want to do another leg. Once you've gotten the first one looking about right, the second one isn't as hard. You just need to move it over a little and follow the same, same sort of line that you did before. Make sure that you have that second hoof higher up on the page than the first one or your Stag is going to look awkward. This is a slightly more challenging drawing. If you feel like you didn't get the proportions right the first time you do it, you can always go through and erase again. That's why it's great to draw lightly. And we're going to have him with one foot raised here. So let's bring a almost a triangle right off of the front here. Again, rounding at the end and just a little bit of a leg, almost a straight bar there. And going back again to that hoof, which should be wider on the front of his leg, which is the, the bottom most part here, then up above. I'm gonna see if I can make that look a little more, yeah. Little bit more cloven, didn't quite come out there. Okay, toward the back here, let's give him a tail, just a real simple bit of fluff. Going to do some erasing, make sure that when some of these lines get gone that he still looks proportionate. You can leave this one here quite a ways up because it's good to have that overlapping to show that that leg is in front of his body. You can do that here as well on the upper portion of his neck. and the sides of the front leg. Something like that. You can leave his cheek in place. I'm gonna Change that nose a little bit. Okay. I can decide whether the tail is completely behind his rump or not. I'm going to move that line a little bit. Now, actually, if this is a old and venerable stag, we might want to even get him kind of a, a rough going, so you follow a line, kind of an S-curve down there, going down makes him look a little more, a little older. Give him an ear coming out back. And 
and then a little bit of a stump for the antlers. And for our antlers, we're going to do a sort of an S curve, but most of it is going to fall back above and behind his ear. So don't uh, don't make it even. You want it to start something like this and then curve around. And then it's just a matter of deciding where you want those horns, prongs to go on his antlers. So you can kind of work that out. You can look at pictures if you're not too sure about antler placement because they're actually one of the easier things to draw, but the harder things, one of the harder things to think of in your head. Wait, how are those supposed to look? So don't feel bad if you need something for reference. Make sure he's got an eye there. I would have gone a little longer on those back legs give him a really fine boned appearance he's a little stubby here more like a goat which is unfortunate but let's consider where our light will be coming from and again I'm going to place it up here in the upper right so we'll want to do some shading down below. I like to kind of sometimes make a line where I'm planning to end the shading. It, when you're doing just a stylized piece, it can be kind of interesting to actually have those really solidly defined shadows. Definitely down here on the back leg. probably on most of this front inside leg as well. Let's see, probably something around there. And that's a stylistic choice. You can always do your shading more like this, where you just kind of put it where it feels right. Just be mindful of where the sun is coming from. Let's see, he'd have a little something on this side as well. And probably on the back of that tail. All right, let's give him a place to stand. And then consider where his shadow is going to be. Now, depending on how high the sun is above him, he may be casting a shadow. If it's directly overhead, of course, you'd have a shadow just underneath his body that was rather solid. If we're a little off to the right here, then casting the shadow down to the left, you would see the outlines of some legs, but we'll keep it very sketchy to simplify things. That hoof's kind of up in the air, complicating things. And then pretty quickly we'll get into his body. Make sure you sort of indicate that there's a head, and I've run out of room there, but you can show antlers and give it the general idea. I'm going to go back and darken up this these antlers a little so they look more like they're part of the drawing. Pretty good one when you want to do a Christmas card, you can do some reindeer. 
using similar techniques. All right. Well, that's the end of our lesson for today, and I thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great day.